Just a very quick addition to the HIV AIDS uh, things. Dry sex, the phenomenon of dry sex. Again, I think it does not contribute considerably to the AIDS uh, pandemic, but the phenomenon exists. And I think even that can be seen as an epiphenomenon, as a mere secondary thing in relation to the vaginal shape variant that Pendergrass discovered and that I take to be one of the main factors for the HIV pandemic in Sub-Saharan Africa, along with a slightly higher penile caliber, maybe. It might be an epiphenomenon. The main reason for it may be the vaginal shape variant in blacks. I'd like to compare it, another obscene example, if you've been waiting, in case you've been waiting for it. Some people claim I like that hypothesis or it, it's a hypothesis, hypothesis that pleases me and so another obscene thing that maybe that uh, pleases me or that I might be getting off now people really think that that I that I delight in women suffering during sex in Africa I'm sorry but these are insolent remarks that I have to endure now well, it might it might be so, uh, something like the same situation as in penile enlargement. Penile enlargement is done mainly by men for uh, for the gym, not for their for th- for their female partners. It's to impress others with the with the flaccid aspect of their penis, not so much their sexual partner. And this may simply be an epiphenomenon of the fact that uh, men can be divided between or into showers and growers, again for the for a general audience, but I don't think that uh, even many medical people uh, know about the differentiation because uh, when I when I was in urology, when I spent time with urologists, I asked uh, some of them, many of them, about the function of the coronary groove, of the groove between the head of the penis and the glan- oh, and the between the glans penis and the shaft of the penis, the coronary sulcus. What what if what kind of a function it has, or what is possibly the function of it? And even the urologists didn't know that as a function, it has been discussed that it serves to remove sperm from the vagina or from around the cervix during intercourse. Sperm from a mating competitor, that's the function or that might be the function of the uh, groove between the the tip or head of the penis and the shaft of the penis. Uh, And so the world men can be divided into showers and growers the shower has a very large flaccid length already and when becoming erect the penis does not uh, gain many more inches whereas the the grower the grower penis really grows when becoming erect and so maybe the growers develop an inferiority complex because of the fact that there are showers actually my own <laughs> <laughs> Just to, uh, to sidetrack now again, I come back to the original topic. I don't know when, but I will be coming back. Uh, I have my own opinion is that uh, some showers are not really showers, but uh, growers in disguise who, with the help of one or two erotic thoughts, uh, become semi-erect and then try to impress other other men. The flaccid length of the penis, in my view, also depends very much on uh, psychological states or on other physiological states like warmth and uh, peripheral circulation. So growers who are honest and chaste in the locker room and who also might be a little bit nervous, they they are the ones who develop the inferiority complexes then when seeing showers or supposed showers. So the phenomenon, the natural phenomenon of the shower might be the uh, the reason behind the phenomenon of penile enlargement. And so in quite the same way, the phenomenon of sub-Saharan African women having a shape variant of the vagina that is a bit tighter than that of others, that might explain this secondary phenomenon of dry sex. Because men, primitive and uh, bold and stupid as they are, 
some men might have said, Oh, my last girlfriend was way tighter than you are. So how come you're, you're not so tight as my old girlfriend? That was a lot better. And so on and so on. And this was the motivation their inferiority complexes came from. Again, it's not a major, dry sex is not a major factor for HIV transmission. The evidence says so. But still the phenomenon does exist. And there is also kind of a, I've just been reading a, a very well-researched article on it by Nicola Hugo, Dry, Tight and Warm Dry Sex Practices in Central and Southern Africa, from a website consult, consultancyafrica.com. And she also explains that the majority of women think that uh, dry, the practice of dry sex is, is bad. Civic and Wilson report, quote, Civic and Wilson report that the majority of Zimbabwean female respondents think that many drying agents cause cervical or uterine can cancer. I don't know if, that it's, if that's true, but um, you see here that the majority does not identify themselves with that practice too much, but it does exist. And there also exists some kind of a virgin cult in sub-Saharan Africa or in South Africa, I think they say here. She says here, it is undesirable, quote, it is, it is also seen as undesirable when it is considered, when the vagina is considered, is considered to be large or cold. Brown et al., quote, respondents' descriptions of a good vagina as narrow, tight, like cement, like a young girl, and difficult to penetrate. Respondents believe that the man should hurt or suffer a little during penetration. Under an undesirable vagina was described as a loosely woven basket that water runs through. Neither partner would be satisfied if the man enters too easily. In this case, respondents explain that the penis swims around. And there is also something like a fetishization of female virginity. The bodies of young virgin girls are idealized. But this could be simply an epiphenomenon of the fact that some women, that many women actually, have that tight vaginal shape variant, either at the introitus or along the whole length of the, of the tube of the vagina. Because some, a large proportion of them, are really tighter, this is where the ideal comes from. And this is why some women, who maybe are not so tight, try to reach that tightness through those herbal powders or potions or detergents, etc. And I think I also have good news because those women who are tight, who have that tight sh shape variant, they shouldn't worry too much about uh, losing their attractiveness for men if they do dilate, as I described in one of the last videos, how they can prevent bleeding, how they can prevent trauma during sex or pain. They shouldn't worry too much about losing that, that attractive part, that, that tightness, because they still will be somewhat tight. Dilation up to the point where bleeding does not occur anymore or where pain will then vanish, that is enough and they will still be quite tight.